now that we are halfway through 2020, I know many of us are still dealing with the pandemic and adapting to the new norm. I was just having coffee last week and it dawned upon me, with the new norm to come, will storage engineers still be relevant in 2020 and beyond? So what's the definition of a storage engineer? The definition of a storage engineer, to me at least, is essentially professionals that build, run, and manage storage and backup systems in enterprises. This also applies to those in the systems integrator space and vendors. Today, I want to share with you my opinion on this topic and some of the observations in the field. Do stay till the end, as I will also be sharing a little on what storage engineers should be doing in 2021 and beyond. When I look back, it just seemed like it wasn't too long ago that the sand storage boom happened. Anyone that were either an engineer, sales rep or consultant in their space were making the big bucks and were highly sought after. It was such a niche then and there were only a very few resources in the market that knew how to do it right. So why was it such a niche though? I've always attributed it to the fact that SAN systems were oftentimes the most expensive single function device in the data center. Not only was it expensive, it was extremely complex. It was also always getting larger and larger and not to mention, issues with storage often meant production downtime. This is an interesting fact that still applies today. If you ask any customer, if a system goes down in production, the first guys to get blamed or called are the storage folks. You are technically guilty until proven otherwise. The shortage of expertise was also part because it was one of those skill sets that was not easy for an engineer to learn. Cobbling up some use or spare parts in a lab is not going to cut it because it's expensive, right? Not to mention each and every vendor had their proprietary way of doing it. It also didn't make sense to buy old devices to learn on because the software were not necessarily easily attainable. In order to be trained, the EMCs and Hitachis of the world required engineers to sit through expensive and dedicated implementation-based training sessions. That was in general only offered to select the partners as well. Even if you had the cash, you may or may not have had the opportunity to do it. So yeah, it was definitely an elite club. Back to the question, are storage engineers still relevant in 2020? The answer is a yes and no. And this is highly dependent on the environment you work in. In large storage install bases such as government sectors, financial, banking, or even manufacturing, the skill sets of a storage engineer are very much needed still. I will go as far as to say, if your organization is required by law to retain data long term for litigation purpose or something to that effect, and you perhaps run mission critical workloads, having a seasoned storage engineer within your ranks is extremely crucial. On the flip side, the mid-market to small business segments, in my opinion, is where the market has completely transformed. The introduction of storage startups were initially seeded here with the promise of simplified storage deployments and management. The introduction of all flash system came with the promise as well that performance is no longer a bottleneck. So why would you ever need to understand performance management? Storage is supposed to be simple with zero learning curve according to the pitch of these new vendors. So is there any truth to this? Yes, absolutely. So much so that I would agree that 80% to 90% of the time, the small and mid-market segments generally only needed what I term as good enough storage systems. They didn't need knobs to tweak, they just needed a simple system to store data. So it is with that promise from the vendors, the storage engineer's role slowly reduced in relevance significantly in mid-sized enterprises. The interesting observation though, is that these mid-market systems have generally exhibited poor reliability when compared with their larger storage brethren. But in defense of these vendors and solutions, I don't think it's a reflection of the product in itself. I know I will get a lot of flack for saying this, but I'll say it anyway. I believe it's largely to do with engineers that work on this system day to day. Like I mentioned earlier, as the storage engineers lose their roles and relevance in mid enterprises, some employers think they can easily convert, say, a VMware engineer or a server engineer or an application engineer to own the storage piece. Through this, this is not just about connecting a storage to a server. For the storage admins out there, you and I know there is definitely more to it. Also not to generalize, for all the years I've worked with storage engineers, the level of care and diligence when it comes to handling data, no other engineers in other domains will truly and fully understand it. I'm interested to know your thoughts too, so do leave me a comment below. While it's unfortunate that this is the sad truth, all is not bleak. 
As promised, here are my thoughts as to how storage engineers can transform themselves or prep themselves for the future. I know I've spoken a lot about the simplicity of the next generation of storage systems, but like it or not, eventually the gap between the big boy storage and the mid enterprise will narrow. So it's important that you keep evolving. One area that I'm particularly bullish about, and I would strongly recommend that you look into, is data management in next generation apps. For example, the MongoDBs, the Redises, the Splunks, and the Cassandras of the world. Gain some understanding into how these applications work. Understand how the workload runs, manages its data, and everything in between. The reason I say this is because many of the engineers in this space are very focused on the app layer but they have very little understanding of how it interacts with infrastructure and storage specifically. These are also the type of application that you will begin to see a lot more in the future. The next area I will recommend diving deeper into will be unstructured data and cloud-based storage. Have deeper understanding of the options available, how it works, how to build it out, how to build the cloud tiering strategy and the likes. Unlike the past, most options are also software-defined storages today, which simply means you can build one up in the lab um, or in the office to learn and to gain experience of. Build up a MinIO setup, a Ceph setup, or Gluster, or any flavor or scale-out type storage and learn the intricacies of it. And lastly, containers and Kubernetes. I know this shouldn't come as a surprise for many, and it is not sp uh, storage-specific, but I believe, frankly, it's definitely a skill set you need to have in the coming years. And now is indeed the best time to start. Why? It is for the pure reason that the know-how to building, running, and managing a Kubernetes environment is extremely niche today. And many of us are at the same starting line. Personally, for me, the technology is constantly evolving and it's quite exciting to be part of that journey. It is not easy, but definitely crucial. On a side note, I have a small inkling that storage as a container service may be a thing worth keeping an eye on too. To wrap it all up, not sure if you can tell from my recommendations, the common theme for the future is largely around applications. Honestly, I still think there is a place for storage engineers in most organizations, but the role will evolve slightly. If you can couple the knowledge of applications and infrastructure, I believe you will bring a lot more to the table. Hopefully I've given you guys some insight of what I'm seeing in the field and as always, if you like the content or enjoy the content, do subscribe, like this video or leave a comment below. I'll see you guys next time.